Hi, I'm Tim Douse, and I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Danny Chapman. As animation programmers with a video game background, we were surprised to discover that film animators tend to animate everything with keyframes, even physical character motions like uh, jumps and falls. Today, we're going to talk to you about a new set of tools and techniques called weight shift that let animators retain precise art direction while using ragdoll simulation to help speed up the production of feature films. So for the last 18 months or so, we've been collaborating with Framestore, which is a large Oscar-winning visual effects studio, and with whom we've been working to bring our technology into production use. So let's start off by taking a look at their character reel from a show that aired earlier in the year, His Dark Materials. This involved lots of time-consuming character animation, and that's exactly the area that Weight Shift is designed to address. It's a lot more comfortable than Oxford. And it's our new home. We should rest. We're lucky enough to be joined by one of the animators who worked on his dark materials, Andras Ormas. Andras, would you mind sharing your screen and showing us how you use Weightshift? Yeah, of course. Thanks. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so the only thing that's animated in this scene is the horse. Uh, the character itself has no keyframes on it. Everything is, is uh, run by the ragdoll simulation. So this guy is just basically just constrained and there are no keyframes at all on any of his body controls. The only thing I've done is I have these locators, rivet controls. Uh, constraint to the horse's geometry to drive the character's uh, hands and legs. And I also constrained his all control. Uh, but besides that, everything is done by uh, the ragdoll simulator. Uh, there's one special thing going on here is the word space forces you can apply, which I applied to his head. That's why he doesn't act like a generic ragdoll. He, it looks like he's intentionally trying to look into the horizon. Now, I have a test that I can show uh, how this actually works and how much difference it actually makes. So I have this scene with just a wobbling cube and I have this guy here just falling. Let me just put him in position. So all we have is just gravity. He's own muscle forces and uh, and you get all this nice high fidelity motion coming from the simulation. Uh, but this kind of shows the problem with ragdolls in general is that they feel dead, uh, lifeless. And uh, one thing you can do is, is that this uh, head stabilization force. I mean, I could try and go in and stiffen up his uh, muscles like his spine and neck and head, but that wouldn't really help out in that. So what I can do here is uh, select the head. And let's add these word space angular and position strength. We simulate. And instantly you get something that looks much nicer. So you can imagine trying to animate something like this would take ages. And the great thing is that if I wanted to change the cube, the animation of the cube, uh, and I could uh, something like this happens. Just re-simulate and instantly that affects him. Uh, so Andras, I guess prior to weight shift a note like that on the underlying motion would have required a huge amount of reanimation, I guess. Uh, yes, and the best thing about weight shift is that 
you can animate with it. So I can show it in a horse example. Uh, we just have the guy in a pose, static pose. And I can just start animating as usual. Just place some keys. Let's say he looks back to check who's following him. And then I have to re-simulate. Now you have you have him looking back. So you basically you can start blocking out your animation and you can just rerun the simulation every time. Uh, there's no um, predefined way of working with weight shift. So you can try using it in your blocking stage or you can just uh, apply weight shift in primary and see if you get something nice out of it. Well, thanks for taking us through how the software um, works, Andras. I know you use this in a lot of um, shots in production. Should we just take a look at a few clips? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So this shot is from His Dark Materials uh, Season 1. And uh, traditionally, we use, uh, used to use and hair, my hair dynamics to simulate ears and tails. But uh, there are certain things we cannot do, such as self-collisions and and more complicated uh, uh, interactions with the environment. You need a proper ragdoll simulation for that, uh, which is what weight shift is for. And it's a huge time saver, uh, not having to keep animating tails, even when the shot changes. Uh. I know you started producing more complex examples um, along with the tail dynamics. Can you talk us through this next shot? So this is uh, from Lady in the Tramp. And this is like an early test for a, a full body setup for weight shift, uh, where you get all the motion, secondary motion coming from this uh, vehicle, which was 3D tracked. And uh, the animator doesn't have to go in and animate all the overlapping action that's coming from the, uh, the carriage. And this is something that we, uh, work more on a, on a project I cannot talk about. It's in the next video. Okay, just a second, let me load that video and then you can uh, talk us through that example. In this example, we applied the full body weight shift uh, setup for a, a creature and all the overlapping action you see is coming from the simulation while the per performance is being driven by the animator. So Andras, uh, how would you have animated this scene if you didn't have access to weight shift? Uh, we would have done it uh, with traditional animation, uh, which would have taken much longer. Uh, I mean, you have to animate the performance, obviously, but to animate all the overlapping high fidelity uh, animation and reactions that come in from the, the two bodies interaction would take a lot of time to animate and Wayshift can save that uh, time. Well, thanks. Thanks very much, Andras, for showing us uh, how the system works and then it's taking us through um, how it's helping save you time in production. No worries. Cheers. Thank you. So it's been great working with animators such as Andras to see how the technology can be used to achieve certain artist driven goals. Uh, so, Tim, can you tell us what other kinds of things can these tools be used for? Yeah, so one thing that takes animators a huge amount of time is uh, cleaning up foot contacts. So we ran a quick test with Framestore. Um, in this video, you can see how the dynamics uh, can quickly resolve ground contacts and foot feels. And the animators who reviewed this test were excited about the potential of this becoming a production tool. Uh, so Danny, can you show us some of the AI techniques in development to tackle complex scenarios? Of course. So in this video, we're, we're, we're showing how we can adapt to simple blocking animation, or in this case, it's actually a motion capture clip to new environments. And the idea is the animation acts as a target and the system figures out how to make the ragdoll follow the target motion whilst adapting to the surroundings. So we can see that the system is generating the motion of a character running across a rope bridge with complex two-way physical interactions. And it's all driven by an animation target that really only took about 30 minutes to prepare. Well, those results are looking uh, really promising. So hopefully we will see that in production soon. 
Yeah, so uh, we hope you enjoyed taking a quick look at uh, how new physics techniques can be used in production and look forward to seeing what animators do with them in the future. Thank you. Thank you.